How about that? Chairman Zhao just sent me his resume. Cocksuckers looking for a new gig. <laughs> you bet your ass we got these dickwads on the run. All right, all right, all right. Settle down. We got trouble in Afghanistan. The Russian foreign minister's in Kabul negotiating a peace treaty with the Afghan president. Problem is, Central Intelligence intercepted an assassination order directed by Raul Menendez himself. In light of the assassination threat, the summit location is changed to Maidan Shar, 50 miles west of Kabul. We'll provide overwatch for the government's convoy. At the first sign of trouble, use of terminal force is authorized. Authorized and fucking mandated. Use your quads for aerial surveillance. You'll need those birds, because those bastards will dig in those mountains. Kraken will track your every move and is ready with ordnance from above if needed. ASDs will flank you on the dirt. We're playing it real safe, so no boots on the ground this time. Just drones and the eye in the sky. Closest heat signature is located in vicinity of Echo Sierra 719 Quads are deployed. ASD support now available. Quad drone down. Multiple hostiles observed in AO. Hi everyone, Lazy Fire here, and welcome back to Call of Duty Black Ops 2. This is the third of the four Strike Force missions that we'll have to take, uh, because everyone decided that we were going to take a certain action in a later vi uh, video, we will not have to go and do a fifth one, which is really nice. Now, however, this one is kind of annoying. You see, these tanks here, while not common, are uh, appear often enough that they do become a problem, and only the ASDs can really take them out effectively, and to switch over to them, it's a little annoying, uh, because you can't hit these guys on the rocks, who are much more common effectively. So basically, you just have to keep an ASD alive long enough that you can drive it over there and kill the two or three tanks that really appear in this map. Now, the other thing that's really annoying about this map is the frequency at which you were updated about the vehicles getting hit. Pretty much every time someone even looks in the direction of one of these vehicles, you hear about it. And while it's very helpful and it's much preferred to them never saying anything, it's it backs up. The, the log backs up so far that you'll be getting told that a vehicle that's been destroyed is being hit still. Now, uh, the only vehicle that you have to keep alive, realistically, is the lead vehicle with the Afghan president. And that vehicle... Actually, I don't think there's any specific vehicle that the Afghan president is in. As long as you keep one vehicle through the entire thing, it'll be fine. And, believe it or not, I actually do that successfully. I've never done better than that, actually. I've done this a couple times, uh, because the first time I played through the campaign, I decided that I wasn't happy with my progress and went back to the start. Alright, once again, I'm trying to send things after that tank, but you'll watch as the ASDs are still back where the first tank was and I decide that I have to take over eventually. And your ASDs don't move very quickly, or not as quickly as they could at least, which creates a big issue. So, as you can see, these I can't do anything there, and the eye in the sky item, the satellite, can drop a missile on that thing, but it just won't work. It just does not want to do it. Outside of that, there's not a lot to this mission, just uh, Drive, these guys drive around some really, you know, the bad parts of Afghanistan. And finally I've switched over. Uh, as you can see, he's kind of on his way, but he's still looking the wrong way. And so, the ASDs are actually pretty hardy. They can take a couple rockets before, or a couple tank shells before they go down. And they can uh, deal some pretty good damage. Right there, I just got hit with a tank shell and got knocked back a few feet. Not too bad. And you won't really see too many of these uh, mines. They only appear in a couple of sections. However, you will have riders coming out to try to place them down. Alright, here I'm trying to snipe this tank with my rockets and not get hit. So, strafing is an effective strategy. And just waiting till he fires. There we go. And <laughs> I, I basically got myself killed there. I fired at those. So, basically, just keep everything, as many of these as alive as possible. You only need one to survive. Now, the really annoying... Oh, I just took a rocket. I forgot about that. I took a rocket straight to the face with this thing. Uh, in single player, these dragon fires, or the quad rotors as they're often called, uh, they can take like maybe two or three shots before they go down. 
Now in multiplayer, oof, see right there, that thing died in one shot. In multiplayer, these things uh, can adjust their altitude. You can hit a button to go up and a button to go down. Okay, similar to earlier, these things are best handled with the Dragon Fire instead of the ASD, though both can actually take that out. Good kill, good kill. And this Dragon Fire actually just almost died and barely stayed up there. So we're doing okay. Actually, I don't lose too many Dragon Fires on their own. I think I lose maybe two while I pilot them, and that's mostly because of these helicopters. Uh, I lose a few more because I keep shooting my own down because they got in the way. Now what's really annoying about not being able to go up and down is the fact that stuff like that, that guy just flew right over me and got shot because of it. Uh, if I could actually get further up or further down, I wouldn't have that issue as often. Uh, of course it would also help with these sections where you're trying to shoot these guys who are higher or lower than you but you can't change your height. That becomes kind of annoying, but the game, for the most part, keeps you at the correct height to be effective. And luckily, this is not a very long mission. It just basically takes you on the path that we uh, saw in the Afghani mission in the single-player campaign. If you think some of these things, uh, landmarks, are looking very familiar, that's because they should be. That's exactly what this is. Which is uh, kind of odd, because there's no other Strike Force mission that takes place on a single-player map. All the other ones take place on multiplayer maps, but I'm sure that they decided Afghanistan was going to factor into the Strike Force missions and figured they had a map already set up. And these guys are deadly with those rockets. So, we just keep... I mean, they're even using these same enemy models from from before. But of course, they're Chinese enemies now. But still, the point remains. And you'll even notice the section coming up is the section with the bridges and everything. And these guys are taking a really bizarre path through this map. Don't really understand it. Uh, the next map, in contrast to this, the next Strike Force mission, it is going to be all ground forces all the time. And look how far away this quad is. Oh no, yeah, this thing is a mile away from everything else. I'm trying to shoot at this thing through a rock because the uh, scan lines in this are just atrocious. So, pop this thing. And the nice thing about the dragon fires is that there's no uh, cooldown time on the cannon, which is a major issue with uh, things in single player and other points of the game. Uh, but for the most part, this is almost done. There is um, some weirdness around this. Uh, specific mission with guys who don't spawn in or guys who are appearing to spawn but aren't actually there and I actually think they spent a good two or three minutes in this section now just trying to figure that out and of course because you can see some of these guys through rocks but you can't quite make out the rocks all the time uh, it's a little difficult to figure out if they're actually there or if uh, they're on the other side or what's going on and because you have infinite ammo it doesn't hurt to just fire a couple times I also thought that it was interesting that this game used quad rotors in a capacity similar to what the... Oh, we're actually done here. Uh, anyways, Ghost Recon Future Soldier had quad rotors too, with uh, similar capabilities. Mission success! Convoy has arrived at pickup But, you know, with this, we're essentially done with Strike Force. We could actually stop now and not have to do the last one, which is optional and you don't even need to find out about it. But we're going to continue on, and i see you guys in the next one. That was one for the books, Mason.